Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars. And this morning, early this morning, I'm reading from, from the book of Matthew. Um, chapter 6, verses 22 to 24. And I'll read those for you, and then I just have the comments about it. The reason I, I noticed this in particular is because of something that happened this morning. Uh, really early in the morning, but I'll get to that in a minute. So first from the Bible. This is a well-known quote. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, third eye point right, If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Now what this part means is that, first it, it has two meanings. Uh, for instance, a spiritual teacher or a person who's, who's spiritually developed or mm, conserves his, his spiritual energy and, and develops that, that person, when they look at other people, the there's a light that comes from their eyes. One eye or the other eye or both eyes, generally one eye. And and that light is like a blessing of the body of light of the spiritual teacher or the spiritual adept for those people that, that he looks at or she looks at. Okay, so, so Christ says the light of the body is the eye. Okay, this is, this is, this is the God in us blessing the God in someone else. Then he says, If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. And here he's referring to the third eye point, concentrating just on, on one point of light deep inside the head that represents the pituitary and pineal glands, actually rep here and here, but, but people usually pick one or the other. And it's not on top of the head, it's, it's, it's not on the forehead, it's deep inside, right in the middle of the head. And when you concentrate the, your awareness in, in those areas, then he says, thy whole body shall be full of light. And this is true, by concentrating directly there and being very careful not to concentrate on the outside here. Um, because concentrating on the outside here creates a different kind of energy completely. It imbalances the pineal and pituitary glands. So, so he is promising us that if we make our, our vision single, one, okay, then instead of dual, two, then our whole body shall be full of light. And, and in my terminology, this means that the body of light that is part of one of the matrix, matrixes that sustain the physical body, the, will be purified and, and shine brightly. This is like when they say in the Bible, they talk about um, walk, men walking up to a person is just sitting there, and these men are full of light, right? And, and sometimes they take them for people from other worlds even, or maybe they are from other worlds for all I know. They might be from the stars because this is a characteristic of our star brothers and sisters that they've advanced to the point of, of soul evolution where where their bodies of light are really brightly shining and, and really light and uh, not dense and, and lacking in you know any kind of sticking point or like that. So could be the star races advanced to that point by doing just what Christ said. That's part of Christ's instruction anyway. So to continue onward, that was a big digression. But if thine eye be evil, maybe this is about the evil eye. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? So, so here we have the ability to concentrate either on darkness or on light here with the single eye okay 
Now, what creates that darkness and that, that light? That's the question I have for you. What creates that darkness or, or what creates that light when her eye is single? Because that is how, that is, the answer to that is, is going to create our presence in the world, you know, our, our relationship to, to the entire world, right? So, so Christ has an answer in the next verse, okay? I, I think that's what's the case anyway. He says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. So we have to make a choice, right? Then he says, You cannot serve God and mammon. All right, so, so to my mind, this is the answer that Christ has. What is light and what is dark? Okay, how do we create this light, this energy of purification in our body of light? How do we serve the world through light rather than darkness? He is saying that we must align with God and not with the things of earth, not with the the not with the creation, but with the spirit that, that is within it, you know. So, so, so what was happening, to get to, to what was happening last night, uh, it seemed that, to me, that, that mankind was speaking in its sleep to womankind here on earth, and relating to womankind as if she were mammon rather than the light of God. Of course, every human being has that light within them, and every human being has the ability to see the light in others rather than the mammon. Okay, So, so things have progressed to a point here on earth where mankind feels that woman is mammon. All right. Now, what this has done, done is it, it has upset the, the natural balance of things on Earth. And the newer sphere is, is, is ratcheting back and forth with that lack of balance right now. Okay? Some of the seers of this new age have said that now is the time when, when humankind, m men and women, actually, we are beginning to, to see the path and see the way to return to that balance, okay? Now from this passage, I would say that those of us who are awaking and, and noticing the, the many powers of our third eye point as, manis, as manifest by concentrating on the outside, on the outside and not that within, the outside of the um, the third eye point. This is relative darkness out here, and this is that with which last night the the man in the new sphere were affecting women. This this kind of relational feeling, this kind of notion that I that I as a man own the women, I can control their minds, and and I can I can I can turn them into mammon. Okay, into something other than spirit, okay? And so, if we pull our attention, when we, we, we want to control, we want to control things because we feel a lack of, we feel separation from, from God. That's why we want to do that. But if we pull our awareness back into the center of ourselves, then we will feel that connection with God and we won't feel the need to control and dominate other people. One of the things that came to me last night as this was happening is, you see this is a fractal universe. It's a fractal universe. And so that's how we're able to co-create the reality. And, and we can do that very consciously or we can do that unconsciously as has, as has been in the case for, for many long eons on earth. All right, so we're rising to consciousness and people are starting to look for the right kind of the right kind of energy, the kind of energy that will make earth um, 
perfect place to live for humanity. And there are many different models out there, and everyone is proposing their model, okay? They're, one of the models that I really like is proposed by the Global Coherence Initiative. They say heart-centered, heart-centered awareness. And the heart, the heart is the, the pump and the power and the, it's like here you have the body engine, the body like vehicle, you know, like the car you're driving, right? Right here in the heart, this is where the motor is, okay? This is where the power is. This is, this is what gener generates the well-being and the power of all the other chakras. So, so if a man is looking for greater sexuality and greater, uh, greater ability to perform sexually, as is the case very much so in the Western world today, many men just don't have that, that procreative um, strength, that, that creative ability. They're, you know, they're leading a sedentary life. They're not very happy with what is going on. They have not that connection with God, and they lose the ability to perform the sex act, okay? So then, with their minds, like last night, they go out uncon unconsciously very often, but sometimes consciously, in the middle of the night and try and make a connection with the um, sexual chakras at, of women, all over the world, and they try and place their their heads, actually their physical heads, on top of women's heads, and with the notion that then their thoughts will um, like cover the woman's head and change her mind to their mind, like mind control, right? This is the physical thing that was happening. And so they're trying to connect to, on a subconscious plane, with the, with the sexual chakra of all the women on earth, okay? And this is, this is because they're not connecting with the powerhouse of their own hearts. They're trying to gain that energy back from the women who are more heart-centered. And it's apparently, uh, culturally, just not the thing to do. But, but from the point of view of the body vehicle, you know, if you don't, if you don't put the gas into the motor, it's not going to go. And the gas comes from the heart, okay? So, so that's the thing that's missing. And so the second thing that happened last night, <sighs> there was a voice that was backed by many male egos that I heard that said, I will place my, my mind on your mind, my head on your head, and, and all your, I will send you all my thoughts, and all my thoughts will be in your head, right? <laughs> so, so my thought on that, and the way I meditated with that, was just the feeling that I am one with God, right? And that this is God, actually. What I'm feeling is actually God expressing himself in some way. And, and rather than try and fight against something that, that, that was happening, I thought of it in terms of my own hologram, right? And I thought, I thought of it as a, as a, as an, as a quest for perfection of my crown, own crown chakra, which was like, actually felt like piano keys being played up there for a while. And the more I felt in at one with what was happening, even though um, these men were thinking that they were controlling my mind, I was feeling the light of God coming down from the central sun and, and entering my crown chakra. And so, and so some kind of perfection of energy took place there, further perfection of energy for me. So that's one way to deal with attempts to control, is to understand that this is a synchronous universe, not a causal universe really. And so other people may be experiencing it as causal at the same time as we're feeling the, the eternal blessing of the now, you know, the, the presence of God in everything, you know, and the, and the furtherance of our own soul, like development in, in all things that are happening. So, and there's one other point. <laughs> it, was, it was quite a vivid night, actually, <laughs> all night long. 
And so, um, the other point that I have to make is about this, this one, um, I've spoken about the Global Coherence Initiative and the, and the heart energy. And the, the, the advantage of that model of co-creating reality is that each person can stand alone in their own power and, and, like, and, 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 and have a chance to ex express themselves through free will. So it allows for um, some of the tenets of, of, the, of the all to, to manifest. One is that um, one is that the universe is love, right? And so we feel the love in our hearts and we reach that powerhouse. The second is that this is a free will planet and so this model of reality allows each person to have free will. That's why I like it. But so now to get back to this other model of reality that came up last night with the um, with the men that were were speaking and like trying to hypnotize the women and create sexual bonds with the lower chakras and like that, that the problem with this model is that it's based on the, the 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 notion of the alpha male and the wolf pack. Okay, it's a very primitive like notion, and that's why it has an appeal welling up from the unconscious mind. Um, so. So the, the disadvantage of this, if we assume that the universe is that fractally created, is that, you see, when we, when we represent a model of the universe, such as, for instance, the heart chakra-oriented model, then we create a fractal pattern, okay, in our own hologram that other beings, other human beings on Earth may or may not choose to to create in their own hologram. In other words, we we offer something that, that that somebody else can that can copy if they want to. Since it's a free will planet, they can choose what they want to do. Okay. Now now when we create in our hologram the um, the pattern of the of the alpha male the uh, 007 mental filter or like you know that the, the the leader of the wolf pack right then what will happen if we uh, assume a fractal patterning taking place is that everyone all the males will want to be alpha males they will create that in their own um, hologram and well, the women will be unable to do that. So in the long run, what that alpha male um, hologram creates is men warring against men until only one man is left and all the women dying. That's basically what would happen. So, so uh, because there would be only then one alpha male on earth, one man, okay, no women, no other man. This, either this man would think that he could mind control everybody on Earth, right? In which case, he wouldn't be on Earth anymore because it's a free will planet, right? Or else, or else this man would actually kill everybody. Okay, so, so I ask you to look at this, if this is your pattern, if this is your notion of reality, and understand the outcome, okay? And, and begin to think in terms of teamwork rather than domination and control because teamwork is a, is a viable concept for human civilization. Um, so, so getting back to getting back to this um, biblical quote the light of the body is the eye and then thy eye should be sing thine eye should be single you should be you could say single minded instead of talking about the pituitary and the pineal, thy whole body shall be full of light. And if it is single-minded, then, then skipping to the last verse, you cannot serve God in mammon, then, then the answer would be serve God. Serve God, not mammon. 
and don't create other people in the image of mammon. In other words, God is everything. You know, see God in everything. Be that. Be that spirit that's within the matter. And so, and if we are that, surely we will see the spirit in other beings as well. Shall we not? It's a whole other ball game out there when we see spirit in matter. Now I know there are those of you that are saying, ah, you know, all I see is the physical world, right? All I see is that. That's all I believe in, right? I, I'm sure there are folks out there like that. But, but to be truthful, from my studies of biology and biochemistry in the old days, they can go to great lengths explaining how the body works, but they can't figure out what creates the energy field of the body. Is that not true? And is it not spirit that organizes all that? I mean, the Bible goes over it again and again, spirit within everything. Is it not spirit? Okay, can we not honor spirit? Can we not take that in, in, into consideration and add it to the equation as men and women, you know, in the world today? Huh. Well, I go on and on, you know. But so, this is your chance to create reality. And you're coming up with some very interesting stuff out there. And so I ask you to follow it with your logical mind to its logical conclusion on Earth and think of it in that way. You know, think of it like that. And and think of it in a biblical sense. Does it sustain spirit? Does it sustain God within us all? Or, or does it cause the soul to descend into, into what, I, what is called mammon in the Bible? Does it cause a descent of, of soul consciousness into the purely material and, and into the uh, devolution of the soul from the... I'll tell you one thing that was happening last night. There was somebody on the other end of the line in the newosphere who had placed his head on top of my head, and he was very determined through black magic, like through the dark, right, through the dark, to, to, um, to control my mind. He was, he was saying all kinds of things. And as has happened many times in the past, he summoned my cat. And he started, cats, cats don't have all that much intellect. That's the truth. They're good with their hearts sometimes, but especially if a human is there to help them with that. But, th but they're not very intellectual, so their basic like um, instincts can be taken over by a human mind at a distance. And, and, and that is possible that happens with, I mean, it's like light, night and day. Sometimes my cat is my cat, and sometimes somebody is tampering with her mind, right? And that is what happened last night, is they kept saying, they they kept trying to, to influence my uh, second chakra, my sexual chakra, by by revving up my cat, you know? What does that do? That in essence, it doesn't do anything permanent to me, but, but in fact it places the soul of that person who is trying to obsess my cat in, into an animal body, into an animal astral form, and it, 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 it contributes to the, the, what is called the devolution of their soul. Okay, In other words, we spent countless eons coming up from the animal world and the animal intelligence into human form. And then they, they're they consciously placing themselves back in, a, in an animal form. This is not without consequences to the astral matter of the person that does it. Okay, So, uh, I, I know these are tough times. I, I know we're having trouble like figuring out what's going to come next. We're trying to figure out how to co-create rea reality and all that, and how to be safe, you know, during the changes that are happening. But, but I just ask you, please just consider when you do your experiments, consider the results, and, and, and like a scientist, figure out what's going on, okay? 
Well, God bless you all. And so, good luck with your experiments. <laughs>